five Miami Dolphins players that could be moved at the trade deadline. It's become quite evident after yesterday's loss, and even before to be honest, the Miami Dolphins' 2021-2022 playoff aspirations are over. Like we've done for way too many years now, it's time to focus on the offseason. The National Football League's trade deadline is next Tuesday, November 2nd at 4 p.m. Miami has been the center of the trade deadline rumor mill for months. I'm not here to talk about that. Xavier Howard, the obvious player the Dolphins could look to move out of Miami is all-pro cornerback Xavier Howard. Howard has not been shy in the past with his desire to be traded. To be fair, from reports, it's been because of financial reasons not to specifically move on from the Dolphins. Miami reworked Howard's deal this year in an effort to give him more cash up front and it's been reported that a handshake deal is in place to renegotiate the remainder of Xavier's contract. Howard could be an attractive piece to move because even though it sounds like a renegotiation is imminent, he is technically under contract until 2024. While Howard is an extremely talented player the Dolphins may want to move on from the constant contract squabbles as well as the occasional injuries that always seem to flare up. Will Fuller, I think it's obvious that the Will Fuller experiment has been a bust thus far in Miami. If Miami were to be sellers at the trade deadline, it may stand to reason that Fuller may be a candidate to move. Fuller will be eligible to come off IR prior to the deadline so could be looked at as a missing piece to a contender. The Dolphins likely wouldn't get much in return because Fuller is on an expiring contract. Getting anything at this point would be a win. Preston Williams, after this past week Miami may have seen enough from Preston Williams. Williams is physically gifted and has shown, albeit very small, glimpses of very good play, unfortunately they've also seen the drops and inconsistencies that come with Williams. Again, Williams could be looked at as a depth piece for a contending team and again most likely would not bring much in return. Jacoby Brissett, this may be a name no one is talking about but the NFL is a war of attrition. Quarterbacks get hurt. Brissett is not a long-term piece of this roster so if Miami can unload him for some a young developmental player or a very late round pick then why not? Miami is past the point of needing Jacoby to win games to keep them relevant. The Dolphins have become irrelevant. If the team moves on with Tua then why not bring back Reed Sinnott and let him hold the clipboard? Devontae Parker, if we are cleaning out the wide receiver room, the Dolphins may as well throw Parker on the block. There are a few guarantees in life, the seasons will change, the sun will rise and set and Devontae Parker will have a hamstring injury. Parker is a player that when all is said and done the narrative will be, if he could have only stayed healthy. From a wide receiver standpoint, this team, if it hasn't already, is Jalen Waddell's team. Parker could be a player that could actually net a halfway decent return. Parker is under contract through 2023 with $8.90 and $9 million cap hits. It's time for the Dolphins to move on from Devontae Parker. Whatever happens over the next week, the Dolphins will for sure be part of the trade deadline rumors, like it or not. Three things we learned from the Miami Dolphins losing to the Falcons. The Dolphins are 1 to 6. If anyone, somehow, had any aspirations that the Dolphins could possibly, maybe, perhaps turn this season around have to 100% except that the Dolphins are not going to be playing postseason football this year. That sucks on many levels. This team, who had expectations of making the playoffs, have fallen beyond flat and are simply nothing close to a quality football team. I wish the circumstances were different, but sadly they aren't. This week coming up will be a major test in the mental capacity of all of us Mamie Dolphins fans. The Deshaun Watson stuff will most certainly be all over the place with the majority of reports stating that the Dolphins are the number one candidate to trade for him. Deal with it, it's not going anywhere as we get closer to November 2nd. We know they're involved and it comes down to if the Dolphins regime thinks Watson will be vindicated in all the charges that are looming. If they do their research, which I'm sure Ross has done, comes up with Watson being exonerated from all this, then I think Watson will be in Miami. If they think it can still go either way, I don't think they take the risk. In the end, buckle up for an extremely annoying week. In regards to the Dolphins and Falcons game, there were a few things that occurred that we sort of had a conviction on that has now been totally answered. The defense is bad. Last year was a major smokescreen with this defense. There really is no other way to look at it any other way. They led the league in turnovers last year and this year, they are not making as many of those impact plays. Yeah, Ogba had that strip of Ryan that eventually led to a Miami touchdown, but overall the Dolphins' defense is barely doing anything out there. 
Watching this game, it looked like the Dolphins' defensive line could get nowhere near Matt Ryan whenever he dropped back. He had all day to throw pretty much every time he dropped back and found a guy open. The Dolphins with all their names on the line with Wilkins, Ogba, Phillips, and AVG didn't record a sack on a guy who wants nothing to do with getting out of the pocket. Javon Holland was the only guy to have a sack Sunday. The Falcons only had 72 yards rushing but man alive didn't it seem that Atlanta could get 4 yards every time they ran the ball? To me it did. Kyle Pitts, a guy we knew was going to be targeted a bunch had his way with the Dolphins secondary. Whether it was Rowe, Jones, Holland, or even Xavier Howard, Kyle Pitts could do whatever he wanted against them. We all knew it was coming after the first few possessions and the Dolphins just accepted that Pitts was going to murder them. Jasicki, Gaskin, and Waddle are players that are the real deal. On National Tight Ends Day, not sure if you heard about this, Mike Jasicki did everything he could to propel the Dolphins to a victory. It seemed like every time Miami needed a play they went to Jasicki and it worked. Outside of the really dumb third and three fade to Jasicki in the first quarter, the Dolphins did a solid job of making sure they got the ball to Jasicki. The touchdown was lovely. Tua gave his guy a chance and Jasicki jumped over two dudes and brought the ball in. It was awesome. No idea if Miami resigns Jasicki in the offseason. I have the feeling they'll lowball him. I can only hope at the very least they franchise him. Gaskin was featured due to the great Malcolm Brown getting injured early. If you could believe it, Gaskin ended up making play after play for the Dolphins. He bailed out Tua numerous times and actually had a touchdown reception. I don't think it takes a smart person to understand that Gaskin should be featured more. Whenever he is featured, the team does better. Does that mean Gaskin will get the build of carries and catches out of the backfield next week? No, the opposite will probably happen. Jalen Waddell is really good. I know it blows to see Jamar Chase getting 200 yards receiving and pretty much doing whatever he wants on the field. Waddell leads rookies in receptions but we all know Chase is being featured and because of that is playing better. I can't say the same for Waddle. Waddle gets the ball when nothing else is there and Tua flips the ball out to him. Waddle had 7 catches for 83 yards which is solid. I don't know why the Dolphins use Waddle like he's Jarvis Landry but that certainly seems to look like how they want to use him. He's wildly fast and Miami wants nothing to try and send him deep to you know, take the top of the defense. Maybe try and start to take the top off the defense. We still don't really know about Tua. Tua's stat line was 32 40 for 291 yards, 4 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, with 29 yards rushing. There's been plenty of quarterbacks that have had stat lines like that have won games. Today wasn't one of those days. Though Tua threw 4 touchdowns, he also threw 2 interceptions that were god-awful. The one before the half was unreal. Miami was around their own 20-yard line and Tua decided to try and fit a ball into a window that didn't exist. In that window that didn't exist, Tua tried fitting a ball to regular ball catcher Durham Smythe. Durham Smythe, believe it or not, is not a guy that gets many balls thrown his way that are more than 4 yards downfield. Naturally, he had no idea the ball was coming his way and the ball was subsequently picked off. It was a dumb decision by Tua when 3 points were on the table. The other pick was, to me, is a bit more explainable. It was surely Tua's fault, but go back and look at the clip of it. The great left guard that is Austin Jackson was unable to get a finger on a guy who was roughly 12 inches away from him. That lead to Tua not being able to do anything when he got to the end of his drop back. Tua, immediately, had to step up in the pocket only to his the backside of another offensive lineman and he, stupidly, tried checking it down. It easily got picked off. What was awful was that it was one play after Xavier Howard picked off Matt Ryan. All the momentum in the world and it was thrown away in one play. But Tua did have many good plays. He fought very hard every play and did what he thought he could every play. Let it be said that throwing four touchdowns should mean that you win. But when you have two mind-numbing plays that put your team in the position that he put them in then you're not going to win often. Tua didn't do himself any favors in staying in Miami, in my opinion. I think the Dolphins should not make the trade right now, but that doesn't matter. This will be a wild week, once again, for Tua and the Dolphins. I don't know what happens this week. I just know it won't boring, which sucks.